twenty fourth day of waiting on god by andrew murray this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by christopher smith waiting on god to know his goodness the lord is good unto them that wait for him lamentations chapter three verse twenty five there is none good but god his goodness is in the heavens O oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee! O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good! And here is now the true way of entering into and rejoicing in this goodness of God, waiting upon him. The Lord is good, even his children often do not know it, for they wait not in quietness for him to reveal it. But to those who persevere in waiting, whose souls do wait, it will come true. One might think that it is just those who have to wait who might doubt it. But this is only when they do not wait, but grow impatient. The true waiting ones will all have to say, The Lord is good to them that wait for him. Wouldst thou fully know the goodness of God? Give thyself more than ever to a life of waiting on him. At our first entrance into the school of waiting upon God, the heart is chiefly set upon the blessings which we wait for. God graciously uses our need and desire for help to educate us for something higher than we were thinking of. We were seeking gifts. He, the giver, longs to give himself and to satisfy the soul with his goodness. It is just for this reason that he often withholds the gifts, and that the time of waiting is made so long. He is all the time seeking to win the heart of his child for himself. He wishes that we should not only say, when he bestows the gift, how good is God, but that long ere it comes, and even if it never comes, we should all the time be experiencing, it is good that a man should quietly wait. The Lord is good to them that wait for him. What a blessed life the life of waiting then becomes, the continual worship of faith, adoring and trusting his goodness. As the soul learns its secret, every act or exercise of waiting just becomes a quiet entering into the goodness of God to let it do its blessed work and satisfy our every need. And every experience of God's goodness gives the work of waiting new attractiveness, and instead of only taking refuge but in time of need, there comes a great longing to wait continually and all the day. And however duties and engagements occupy the time and the mind, the soul gets more familiar with the secret art of always waiting. Waiting becomes the habit and disposition, the very second nature and breath of the soul. Dear Christian, do you not begin to see that waiting is not one among a number of Christian virtues to be thought of from time to time, but that it expresses that disposition which lies at the very root of the Christian life? It gives a higher value and a new power to our prayer and worship, to our faith and surrender, because it links us in unalterable dependence to God himself. And it gives us the unbroken enjoyment of the goodness of God. The Lord is good to them that wait for him. Let me press upon you once again to take time and trouble to cultivate this so much needed element of the Christian life. We get too much of religion at second hand from the teaching of men. That teaching has great value if, even as the preaching of John the Baptist sent his disciples away from himself to the living Christ, it leads us to God himself. What our religion needs is more of God. Many of us are too much occupied with our work. As with Martha, the very service we want to render the Master separates from him. It is neither pleasing to him nor profitable to ourselves. The more work, the more need of waiting upon God. The doing of God's will would then, instead of exhausting, be our meat and drink, nourishment and refreshment and strength. The Lord is good to them that wait for him. How good none can tell but those who prove it in waiting on him. How good none can fully tell but those who have proved him to the utmost. 
My soul, wait thou only upon God. End of 24th day.